Hello viewers, welcome to the next section of this course, Web Broker and Apache Modules. In the previous section, we've learned how to put Delphi on the server. In this section, we'll see how to handle some of the most common problems when facing web servers, such as serialization, MIME types, HTML encoding, and so on. We'll see the following topics in detail. Implementing a RESTful interface using Web Broker. Controlling a remote application using UDP. Using app tethering to create a companion app. Creating DataSnap Apache modules. Creating a Web Broker Apache module and publishing it under HTTPS. Using a cross-platform HTTPS client. Now, we will see the first video of this section, implementing a RESTful interface using Web Broker. In this video, we will learn how to implement a RESTful interface using Web Broker. What's REST? Representational State Transfer is an architectural style consisting of a coordinated set of architectural constraints applied to components, connectors, and data elements within a distributed hypermedia system. The term representational state transfer was introduced and defied in 2000 by Roy Fielding in his doctoral dissertation at UC Irvine. If you want to know more about REST, I strongly suggest you read Fielding's dissertation here. So, how do you build a RESTful system in Delphi? There are a lot of solutions, but according to the mentioned definitions, RESTful is not a set of libraries or algorithms. It is an architectural style, and as such, it can be respected 100%, 60%, 30%, and so on. There is a sort of scale used to measure how much a system is RESTful or not. This scale was first introduced by Leonard Richardson at the QCon conference. So, it is called the Richardson Maturity Model. To get all the benefits that a RESTful approach brings, you should aim for RMM Level 3. Be happy, the system we'll develop in this video is compliant with RMM Level 3. Our REST service handles a resource that is stored in a database table called People. It provides CRUD methods, plus some specific features to paginate the data. Remember that RESTful doesn't mean exposed method to do CRUD on a table, but exposed method to handle a resource. A resource can be, or cannot be, have a representation on a database table. Moreover, a resource can also be very complex with multiple nested objects. So while a table can be represented as a simple resource, generally a resource is not a mere table, but an object graph stored on one, two, or more tables, or not stored at all. This is the HTTP REST interface that we will implement. HTTP verb is get, and the URL is people. It will return a JSON array containing one JSON object for each record present in the table people. In each object, the property name is the name of the field, while the property values are the value of the fields. HTTP verb is get, and ID is a URL parameter which returns a JSON object representing the specific person who has the ID equals dollar sign ID. HTTP verb is post and the URL is people, which will create a new person in the table people. Requires a request body containing the new person to create as a JSON object. The request content type must be application forward slash JSON. HTTP verb is delete, and the people ID, this will delete the person with ID equals dollar sign ID. HTTP verb is post, and the URL is forward slash people forward slash searches. This will return a JSON array containing JSON objects. Executes a search over the people table, returning only the records that match the filter passed as a JSON object in the request body. HTTP verb is post, and the URL is forward slash people forward slash searches page equals X. This will requires a JSON object as request body. The parameter is passed as property text in the request body. This video uses DMVC, a Delphi open source framework based on Web Broker that allows you to create powerful RESTful web services. You can find the project code here. Check out the project using the instructions on the website and put it into a folder on your file system. There are no components or controls, only units. Now you have to configure your IDE to find the DMVC units. So, open the Delphi, and we will open the project. 
Then navigate to Tools, Options, Environment, Options, Delphi Options, and then Library. Then click on the Library Path Edit and add these paths one by one. You can change the DMVC framework to the appropriate path on your machine. This video uses many DMVC features and could be a little confusing if you don't know the basics of REST and DMVC. If so, please read the following documentation before going ahead. The first one is building web services the REST way. The next is RESTful Web Services, the basics from this link. The latest information about Delphi MVCF framework is available in the developer guide which you can get from this link. The developer guide is also available as a PDF here, and after pressing enter, it will download a PDF for you. A valuable resource for Delphi MVC framework is its samples, so please check the samples folder into the project root folder. From this point onward, I'll not repeat concepts and information already explained in the previously mentioned articles, so read them with care. Now navigate to Delphi project and web broker web server application. Now, the wizard asks you what type of web server application you want to create. This demo will be built as a console application. However, you can take advantage of the flexibility of Web Broker and add another type of application. For instance, an ISAPI DLL or a Windows service. At this point, select Standalone Console Application and click Next. The wizard proposes a TCP port where the service will listen. Click on Test Port. If the test port succeeds, use it. Otherwise, change the port until the test passes. In this video, port 8080 is used. Click Finish. Save All. Name the project peoplemanager.dproj and the web module webmodule.u.pas. We start from the business object classes. This web service will manage people, so let's create a new unit and declare the following class. Hit Ctrl-Shift-C to autocomplete the declaration. Save the file as personbo.pas. Note that in projects where you have a lot of different types of classes, business objects, controllers, data modules, and so on, it can be useful to organize the units in different folders. So I saved personbo.pas in a folder named Business Objects. Feel free to do this as well. Now it is time to create a Delphi MVC Framework Controller. This is the class where there will be all the code to handle the HTTP requests and responses. Here, there should not be business logic code. Create a new unit, name it peoplecontrolleru.pas and save it into the controllers folder. Fill peoplecontrolleru.pas with this selected code. Quite long, but all our RESTful interface is implemented in this unit. Now we have to write the part that actually accesses the database. In this video, we'll use a simple design pattern called Table Data Gateway. Table Data Gateway, TDG, was defined for the first time by Martin Fowler in his fundamental and highly recommended book, Patterns of Enterprise Application Architecture. TDG is defined here, an object that acts as a gateway to a database table. One instance handles all the rows in the table. Let's create our TDG using a data module. Add a new data module, name it People Module, and save it into the modules folder as peoplemodule.u.pas. Now, drop on the data module and link each other's. The components as follows. This is an extract of the DFM file. Now we have to configure some data access stuff. Double click on QRY people. The component editor shows up. Write the query select from people and click execute. Hold the window open. This will be the query used to generate all the CRUD statements. If you have correctly connected qrypeople.updateObject to UPD people, you should see an Update SQL Editor button on the right side of the Component Editor form. Click on the Update SQL Editor button and you will get another Component Editor. This time it is related to the UPD People component. Select fields like this and click Generate SQL and OK. Now, your UPD people component has been configured with all the SQL statements needed to correctly update the people table.
Now we have to create the methods used to CRUD records. Go to the people module u.pas code view. Declare these method in the class public section. Hit control shift C to auto generate method bodies and fill them with this selected code. These methods will be called by the controller capping data retrieved by the HTTP request. As you can see, the CRUD methods do not have references to the HTTP environment or to JSON objects or whatever is related to the particular environment. These methods and the whole class itself can be used everywhere, even in a classic client-server application. Remember that the dependencies between the classes should be reduced as much as you can. Add the Objects Mappers unit in the Implementation Uses clause of T-Person module. Just one more thing to do in the T-Person module. Create the event handler on before connect on the TFD connection and write this code, adapt it to the point to the correct database path on your system. We're about to finish. Go back to web module u.pas and create the on create event handler. Here we have to configure the Delphi MVCF framework starting point. It is really simple, just two lines of code. The fmvc variable must be declared in the private section of the class and you have to add the people controller u unit in the implementation uses clause. Now your project should compile. If not, check the dependencies between all the units. After running the project, you get a sad console window that informs you that an HTTP server is running on port 8080. Launch a browser better if Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox and request the following URL. Your browser should show all the data available in the people table as a JSON array of JSON objects. If you want to try something different, get a valid person ID from the list of people. Look for ID, open bracket, some number, close bracket, in the JSON stream and append it to the URL after the slash. This should be the effect. Wow! This video is very long. However, it summarizes all the concepts already seen in the previous section, so it's worth it. The application is organized into three layers. Controller, T-People Controller, takes care of all the machinery needed to deserialize the JSON data into Delphi objects, coordinates the job with the table module, table data gateway, T-People Module, handles all the persistence needs, gets objects and persists them, retrieves data sets and converts them to objects, business objects, T-Person, implements all the business logic required by the domain problem, in this sample, we don't have business logic, but if present, it should be inside the T-Person class. All the section methods look like the following. Read information from the HTTP request. Invoke some methods on the T-Person module instance. Build the response for the client. Let's take a look at this section used to create a new person. What's the ctx.request? One of the RESTful features is the use of hypermedia controls. The point of hypermedia controls is that they tell us what we can do next and the URI of the resource we need to manipulate to do it. Instead of having to know where to get our newly created person, the hypermedia controls in the response tell us where to get the new person. Another interesting action is mapped to post forward slash people forward slash searches. Here's the code. Read information from the requests. Call some method on the T-People module. Prepare the response also if render has been already called. This action is a bit longer, but the three steps are still clearly defined. This action executes a search on the People table using a pagination mechanism. The URL to get the next and the previous page are returned, along with the response in the headers DMVC Next People page and DMVC PREV People page. So the client doesn't have to know which kind of call to do to get the second page, but can simply navigate through the returned info. One last note about the T-Person module that heavily uses the dataset helpers introduced in the serializing a dataset to JSON. Look at this code used to get a person by ID. Uses the dataset helper to convert a record to an object. It could not be simpler. Also, the method to create a new person is made really simple using some of the mapper methods. Get the insert statement contained in the tfdu update SQL. Maps the object properties to the command parameters. Execute the statement. Retrieve the last assigned ID. What a huge topic we covered in this video. 
To test the RESTful service that you will develop from now on, you can use the restdebugger.exe program provided within since Delphi XE5 in the bin folder or the free Postman Chrome extension. These tools allow you to send all the HTTP verb requests while the browser, using only the address bar, can only issue GET requests. Awesome! We've successfully implemented a RESTful interface using WebBroker.